Hello there and welcome back to the new video. In this video, I'll be going through this blog that talks about creating dashboard for data drip detection in Python. So a couple of days ago, while I was scrolling my LinkedIn, I found this quite an interesting post. And as I was going through this, I thought of why not share it across with the community by creating an overview video for the same. So here it is. Also, the link for this blog post and original post on LinkedIn is there in the description box. Make sure to check it out. So let's move on. So here we start off with the use case of data drip detection. So data drift is nothing but when there is change in the data distribution to when a model was trained at a certain time step t and, and then when it's evaluated, let's say at time t plus n. Now there are two things that can occur in data drift. One is target drift, which is the target variable that you're trying to predict essentially has a different distribution. In case of regression, you might see a shift in the mean or the range has totally shifted, which let's say is like property prices pre Corona days and post Corona days. So there has been a shift in a minimum maximum and the average range for the house prices. So this is kind of a target shift and regression. Whereas in classification, one of the possible things is to have new category emerged out of the blue. And the second kind of data drift that's seen is called covariate data shift, where all the independent variables kind of show a shift in the distribution to how they used to occur and how are they occurring now. So it's a good practice to train your machine learning models on a periodic basis. And it's even good to have signals that can trigger when to train and when not to train because else you can go about training them every day which might not really be required but would be consuming most of your resources and at the end of the day large amount costing to company so having a system in place that periodically detects if the data shift has happened or not is a must have nowadays for companies to save on the cost and also have latest model in the production so in this blog, the authors have used Evidently, which is a Python package for detecting data drifts and building dashboard in the Jupyter Notebooks. But how are you going to share this to your, let's say, managers or to an entire department for that matter? It's always helpful to kind of have a dashboard that everybody has an access to and people can track things from there. So here authors talk about something called Mercury Framework, which is about creating a dashboard from a notebook, which you already have as a part of your Evidently output and then using that directly and pushing that, creating a web application out of it. And all of that is done with just few lines of code. So it's actually a combo that you would not want to miss. So they also have a live application that's deployed on Heroku Cloud Platform. So let's go through that. So yeah, so we have three dashboards that are there to kind of understand what's going on. So let's go through, let's say, housing drift detection, because that's what we talked about as an initial example. So on the left hand side, you see the use case, what you're trying to do in number of sample counts, which is how many samples would you want to consider from the same data split as a part of data on which you would want to detect the drift. So if I run this, it will basically execute the notebook that has an evidently code that runs your statistical test for detecting data drifts. So finally, we see like it says drift is detected in 77.78% of the features, which is seven out of nine. So in this table, we see like we have features, types, reference distribution, current distribution, the drift was detected or not, the test that was used, the score of the drift. So for population, let's say, this is how the reference distribution is. So the reference column is essentially based on the training data on which the model was trained. So for example, if you take last one year of data and you train it on that, that's the reference data, what we are talking about. And the current distribution is what we are testing on, which is, let's say, next day of data, next two days of data and so on. So we see both of them have similar distribution. So the data drift column says it's not detected. Then for example, if we see house age, which is this column, we can see like distributions are a little different over here. So the system says it's detected. And similarly for other features as well, we have some idea to what's happening. It also gives you a functionality to download all of this as a PDF report or as an HTML document. Cool. So let's go back. So we have already seen what data drift is, which is target and covariate kind of are two major categories. Then the question arises what to do after data drift is detected. The simple answer is you would want to train your model again and update that. Now there are many ways how you can actually go about training a model. One could be like scrapping the entire model and training it on new data altogether. The second is appending new data to the older one and then training your model. And the third one could be appending new data to the old data and giving a preference to new data more and scaling the preference down as you go more in the past. So it all depends on the kind of data and the priority on the recency aspect of it. 
and its implications on the business. So as of now, I haven't really thoroughly gone through the Evidently package and what all algorithms it offers. But as part of this blog, I do understand it gives you implementation of certain popular tests out of the box that can compare two distributions and some of them being chi-square test, JS divergence, KS test and so on. Okay. Okay. So this is how you can actually kickstart the journey for building data drift detection system for your use case as well. You just clone it. You have a virtual environment or not depends on you, but I would recommend having it because you would not want to clash the versions of the libraries that you use for other projects. You just need two packages, which is evidently an ML jar Mercury. And finally, you just load the data set here. They're just playing around with Iris sample data set to show how things would work. So you load the data set, you set the data frame with feature names, set the target to the target column, and finally call the dashboard with relevant parameters and then calculate how many samples you would want to keep as a part of reference and how many samples you would keep as a part of live data. So here we have like 75 first samples from the training data are used as reference, whereas certain number of samples chunk from back, which is written by this minus new samples live production data against which the distribution comparison would happen. And then we say more is inline because you'd want to show everything onto the same Jupyter notebook. So with this, you'll have your dashboard ready where you see all these bar plots with relevant columns, which you saw initially and which test actually resulted in detecting if the shift was there or not. All of that is there presented as a part of this dashboard. So in, so in this, you can also see like in the dashboard, we have two parameters, which is tabs, which is taking list of two things. One is the data drift tab and the verbosity level. And the second one is cat target drift tab. So since the target variable here is categorical, hence we use the relevant set of drift detection method for that. And also as a part of this, you can see, right, says column underscore mapping equal to none. So this is about if you are not really okay in giving evidently the power to infer data types on its own, you can here give what all columns are categorical, what are columns are numerical, all of that mapping can be given over here and accordingly the relevant algorithms would be triggered in terms of detecting the drifts. So great, we have everything now working locally, but what if now I want to show this to my manager or share it across with, let's say the CTO of the company or to the head of data science for that matter. So definitely they are not going to run cell by cell and observe these results. One thing you can do is to ex export the thing from Jupyter Notebook as a part of PDF or Markdown or HTML for that matter and share it across. But again, that's not reusable. So it's always a good practice to make an interactive web application. And why not? If it just take a couple of lines of things for you to write down to convert your existing Jupyter Notebook as a part of the web application, it's a win-win situation for you because you're not going to learn something really difficult that has a different learning curve and also for your managers in terms of not bothering about running the entire Jupyter Notebook. So this is where we talk about the open source Mercury framework. So it's just about writing YAML header. This entirely works on you knowing how to write YAML files. That's it. There's no code as such involved. It's just about writing YAML with relevant key value pairs and you'll have your Jupyter Notebook ready working as a dashboard in no time. So as we saw in the initial application on the left hand side, we had all these parameters that we can tweak around. So this is what it makes it. You're given the title description. If you want to show code on that platform or not, the web application essentially, and the parameters, which is new samples, which is what it is a slider. The initial value is set to 25. The minimum is set to 10. The maximum is set to 75. And the label that's associated with that slider would be new sample count. And then you have a checkbox of setting the verbosity to true false. That's it. With this, anybody can now go around and play with the slider widget and run the comparison on different splits to see the data drifts. And finally, once all of this is done, all you need to do is just do Mercury run and the web application will be ready on your local host, which looks something like this. So we have this new samples count by default value set to 25, minimum 10, maximum 75 verbosity, run and download. Download will give you the report that you can download as a part of HTML or PDF and clicking on the run button would execute your Jupyter notebooks that there in the background where your evidently code runs. And the dashboard that's there on the Jupyter notebook is displayed over here. So yeah. So with this, we wrap and have a web application that now anybody can go ahead and tweak to give a relevant number of samples to observe the data drift. Now, what about 
if I want to share it across with someone because right now everything is running just locally on your system. So you can go about doing it on any web hosting platform. Here they have used Heroku. So I'll not go into how to do deployment, but once that's done, you'll have something like data drift detection.heroku.com, which again depends on you. If you are creating your own application, you can name it accordingly. So now the things are done for one shot. Clearly you would want to monitor this over time and have a periodic check in terms of drifts that are happening in the data. So now we talk about scheduling and email notification. You can also schedule things running at a certain time. So you just need to use schedule key and the notify key in your YAML configuration. So schedule accepts the cron tab string with this string what's written over here says you want to run it five days a week, which is one slash five and every day at 8.30 a.m. And then you pass on the email ID of the people under the notification key as a part of on success. If everything ran successfully, you would kind of notify all these people have this report as a part of the attachment and send it to them. So this can be done every day at a certain time and relevant stakeholders will have the access to the report in terms of seeing what's happening. So this is how the entire YAML would look like. The initial stuff where you have title description, schedule, notify all the parameters that are there that user can play around. So I would also encourage you to go about checking this documentation for more details around notebook scheduling. There could be other things that, that you might get interested in. So yeah, that's it for this blog and it was quite a practical and important use case for any industry I think that's working in the data science department because data drifts are real and they can make your model suffer even though your model performs really good on some days. If you don't track these metrics, you would not know the reason for your model on some bad days. So yeah, if you like such content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and do share it across with the friends to whosoever is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.